Thank you again, Dr. Mazlina. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning uh, to all the participants. First of all, thank you very much uh, to come, Unimas, for inviting me to share uh, a bit about uh, Google Tools and also welcome to everybody uh, who joined today as well as uh, for those uh, who continued joining since uh, last week. Right, so hope that uh, the last session gave uh, some ideas and also spark some uh, creativity and also innovation uh, to for you to uh, create activities for students uh, teaching and learning. Well, today we're going to look into uh, series two. Uh, we're going to go into three uh, Google apps that uh, available. Uh, the, the third one, I changed a bit because uh, when I think back, uh, it's better for me to highlight uh, for today the three uh, which I feel is the major uh, crucial thing or can give the most impact for lecturers or academicians to create uh, activities for students. So again, uh, for those of you who just joined in, uh, this is their first time. So I leave again my uh, phone number as well as my email. Please do uh, contact me if you have uh, any queries or anything regarding uh, Google or even teaching and learning. I would be glad to discuss and also assist in your preparation. Okay, before I go further, because uh, I changed my mic today, so Dr. Mazina, can you hear me clear? Eh? Loud, eh? Okay, thanks. Loud, loud and clear. Okay, so uh, just to recap, last week, we've be, we have gone through three apps that is uh, Google Jamboard. Uh, it's uh, similar to, or it is a whiteboard, but under Google app. And we have also see the notes that is called Google Keep, where we take we used to take notes and also video conferencing, similar to WebEx, where it is called Google Meet. Okay. Uh, so these are the three things that uh, we have gone through, but I'd like to wrap up uh, so about 15 minutes or so in this first part to recap about teaching and learning related to these apps. Okay, today, we're going to go into three apps that is uh, Google Classroom, uh, YouTube, and Google Sites. For the Google Expedition, we'll go through about 10 minutes for, uh, at the last session because it's very straightforward. Uh, but I would like to highlight this time about Google Sites. It is a platform where you can create website, but actually, even though you can create a website, it's very useful tools for your teaching and learning. Okay, just to recap about the tools that we are using, and as I've uh, told all of you, uh, to all participants that I respected the most, these are just tools. And uh, in terms of tools and in the aspect of its technical, actually, there are a lot of references, even in YouTube, if you find a lot of uh, technical things that explain how to operate the tools. But before we go further to see how to work with the tools, I would like just to highlight again the fundamental aspects. Uh, these are just tools, but the most important thing apart from having good knowledge and also skill in using the tools, we must also have a very good understanding about the teaching and learning. And as we all know, uh, there are several quotes that highlight about learning is the product of activity of learners. That means it involves active learning. And again, by learning, you will uh, teach and by teaching, you will learn. Okay? So there, if you remember, there's one argument 
about this uh, diagram where some of the, of the researchers query because they don't uh, they say that there is no supportive data that supports the evidence of this uh, learning pyramid where if you notice in some of the uh, in the website where lecture has uh, the less impact while teaching others gives the most impact even though a lot of people query about the value that we put in 95 percent uh, impact or uh, is the effectiveness is by teaching others but we cannot deny that lecture based only is not as effective compared to when the students apart from attending lectures they are able to discuss they are able to collaborate and they are able to teach others through peer learning and we know that <clears throat> and we can see that the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery what we are trying to do with the current situation with this uh, 21st century education where knowledge can be assessed anywhere compared to 30 years ago when you don't have any internet and your sole source of information is only from your lecturers as well as library so attending lectures is the sole important thing apart from doing the discussion and collaborative activities not through online but through face to face but now with the advancements of uh, ICT the importance of having the skill to get the information from other sources is very important and some uh, say that part of our task is to facilitate in the discovery of knowledge so based on all this how these tools can be used to enable them to have an active learning experience as well as uh, assisting them to discover not only the knowledge but also their potential okay and if you look into world economic forum uh, they have predicted by 2025 <clears throat> the top 10 skills required for a person would be if you look here analytical thinking and innovation another one is active learning and learning strategies complex problem solving critical thinking analysis uh, creativity originality and initiative and leadership social influence technology use technology design and programming okay flexibility resilience reasoning and problem solving and if we were to cater for this we know that through proper design in our uh, learning and the use of uh, tools like google apps we have the opportunity to explore into how we can conduct teaching and learning in which through our uh, model or through our design we can help students to improve themselves and to experience all these skills in order to prepare them when they graduate in the future so these are the things what we are doing is actually using these tools as a means or as a platform to prepare them to have all these required skills so that they are well prepared when they graduate and uh, the last part about what I'm trying to go through in terms of the tools. Now, for those of you, I know that currently now, uh, there are a lot of uh, call it competition in terms of innovation in teaching and learning. So I would like to highlight a few things regarding uh, the use of these tools and how you can increase your creativity and innovate by using all these tools, not only to improve your teaching and learning, to improve the quality of the student, but also to innovate the way you teach. Now, if you notice in the, in the website, they call this, this SAMR model, SAMR model, okay? Where 
they define this into four categories substitution, augmentation, modification, definition. Uh, this model was created by Dr. Ruben uh, Puentidra, in which he explains how technology can be uh, creatively designed for use in the teaching and learning. So before we go through to see the three Google apps, I would like to highlight this. Because for those of you, uh, especially if uh, Unimas have the uh, candidate who are going for ACRI, for example, because I was uh, grateful to be involved with KPT, uh, becoming the panel for ACRI for two years. So I would like to take this opportunity to explain regarding this uh, SAMA model. If you were to create an activity or you're trying to use the tools for your teaching and learning. This model can assist in understanding where your creativity are in applying your teaching and learning. Substitution means that just uh, substituting the way you teach using another platform. For example, previously, students send your assignment using Microsoft Word, but now instead of sending using Microsoft Word, you're asking them to use Google Doc. So there's no modification, it's just a change of platform. Or previously, you asked them to submit through writing, but now they submit through using of Google Docs. So this is what we call as only substitution level. Augmentation is where you modify a bit. If I were to use a Google Apps like Google Docs, instead of they use Google Docs to just prepare the report, but then having the opportunity to collaborate in preparing the report online, okay? Because if you are using just a normal Microsoft Word, they just prepare, then they submit their files to their friends, and then their friends will take turns and write. But when you ask them to prepare a report as a group work online using cloud computing, that is where you have a bit of modification. And that is what we call your innovation or creativity is at augmentation stage. A modification is where you change a bit. Take, for example, you have uh, the student doing this uh, Google Docs, and then instead of they prepare a writing, they need to incorporate other elements, for example, incorporating um, online YouTube videos, okay, as well as getting comments from others when they prepare the report because they are able to share their document together with industry, for example. So Having this approach is where the stage of modification. But you can see that apart from just replacing, substituting from Microsoft Word into Google Doc, sending report, but they need to do other things. Okay, by just having that technology where they can share, okay, they can get comments from the industry, they can put in, they can embed other elements inside there. That is where we call it as modification. Now, redefinition when you totally change the function of that Google Doc to become another type. For example, other than having them to prepare a report, they can collaborate, they can uh, make Google document as an interactive document, and it is being used not only as a preparing document, but other things, then that is where redefinition is the status of innovation. So just uh, to assist those who enter any competition, not only just for competition, but if you were to redefine your teaching and learning, okay? So you can use this SAML model 
as your basis to know which stage or which step of your innovation when you create that particular uh, teaching or learning activities. Okay? So you can see a lot of videos I provide here to understand more about the, what SEMA model is all about. Okay, so by having this basis, this is where, while I'm explaining all of you regarding the use of Google Apps, the three Google Apps today, I will incorporate some of the teaching and learning activities that you can uh, do apart from having to use the tool as it is meant to be, right? So today, at the end of this course, uh, we hope that participants should be able to explain the function and usage of some Google Apps and these uh, three Google Apps, that is Google Classroom, YouTube, and also uh, Google Site, and also to create Task and collaborate online using Google application for teaching and learning. Okay. I will go to another about maybe 10 minutes to explain. Then we'll start off with our uh, practical. So before we go further, just to make sure if uh, most of you who are using a laptop right now, okay, open up Google Chrome. If you don't have Chrome, you can open up uh, any Firefox, or if those of you who are using Apple, you can open up Safari, but go to google.com and sign in. If you don't have the G Suite, Google G Suite for education uh, purchased by your institution, then you can use your personal Gmail to log in into the account. Okay, so try to do that. So the first apps that we're going to see is Google Class. So I would appreciate if uh, some of you who have used Google Classroom, please uh, tell me whether you have uh, used it or not. And even if you don't have, also please inform me so that at least I can have some idea on how far some of you have uh, used Google Classroom before. Thank you very much. So you can just uh, put up inside the chat. And today we are going to go into three aspects in Google Classroom. How to create a new classroom and how to work with this uh, Google Classroom. Okay, thank you very much, Sharina. Not yet used, no experience. Okay, so today we're going to go through step by step on how to create uh, your first uh, Google Classroom and try to build up the module inside there. Okay. So let me uh, finish off uh, this PowerPoint for Google Classroom until here. Then I will open up my Google Chrome. And from there on, we'll go step by step in creating your first Google Classroom. Now, Google Classroom is just like your normal LMS. Like for us in UMT, we have our own LMS. I'm, I'm sure Unimas also has uh, your own LMS where you can put in your notes. You can do blended learning. Students can submit their assignment and have discussion. The only thing now is Google Classroom is free. As long as you sign up with Google using the normal Gmail, you can access this Google Classroom. Uh, it is a bit different uh, from, uh, let's say, open learning. Open learning is also another type of LMS, but uh, I heard that L Google, uh, open learning, you need to uh, subscribe and also you need to pay. And it assists educators similar to your LMS. You can develop your module, create, upload your notes, create assignment and also task, okay? Uh, it is not much better than the others. It's just a platform, especially those, for example, who are not attached to a university. So they don't have the advantage to have their own LMS. So teachers who are using uh, tuition, who are having tuition 
or they are making online courses, they use Google Classroom as their LMS to teach uh, other people. Okay. So today, what we're going to do is these four things. How to create a class, create a topic, adding materials, and adding assignment or quiz. If you have some of your notes or maybe your uh, videos or what, you can prepare. We we'll try to you we'll try to upload and also uh, create uh, an activity. Okay, I'll be stopping here. Stop sharing here, and I will uh, share my Google Chrome. Okay, if you are opening up, please open, go to google.com and uh, register. Okay, the first is how to open Google, uh, Google Classroom. Now, once you have signed in, uh, you have this uh, logo that shows that you are signed in. You can see this uh, nine box button. This is where you have all the apps, the Google apps situated, located. Just uh, browse, scroll down until you find Google Classroom logo. So you can see here called Classroom. Okay, there is an, uh, a logo where you have three individuals here and uh, in front of the, uh, we we'll call that the green board. So you can click here. You will go to your Google Classroom. Okay. So for those of you who has uh, created a class before, you will see in your main page of your Google Classroom the class that you have created. Okay. If you hasn't haven't created anything, then it will have a blank. Okay. I will go here because this is my private uh, call that uh, personal account. I go to my UMT because I seldom use UMT because UMT started to have Google two years back. Okay. This thing I just uh, created for this uh, class today. Okay. Now, what can you find inside here? In this interface, you can see your class that you have uh, created. This one. If you look at this top here, top right, next to this nine icon box, if you click, there is two functions. Either you want to join a class or you want to create a class. So this is where we are going to go after. The first thing is to create a class. Now, how to join? I will uh, give you the code for this one and try to join and see what can you uh, see when you join the class. So the plus sign is for you to create a class as well as for teachers. If you were to create a class, you can click here. If you have created a class and you want the student to join your class, so the student will press this plus sign and they click join class. Okay. This uh, three uh, bar here is where you can find the setting. If you click, there is a list. You can also see your list of uh, class. You can also see the list of your archive class. <clears throat> okay. If let's say you go into one over here, then you can also click back to this class to go through all the classes. Okay. And this is where the setting, if you click setting, this is 
the part where you can adjust or set the function of uh, certain uh, things inside Google Class. Okay. All right. Let us go through and create your first uh, classroom. Okay. Uh, do most of you are in front of your laptop for to experience it, to try this? I hope uh, a lot of you are in front of your laptop. Okay. So click the plus sign. The first step, we want to create a class. So click this one and click create class. Okay. <clears throat> so you will see a pop-up having these four things that you need to fill up. So the question is, do you need to fill up everything? Well, not necessary. Most important thing is your class, of course. So let's say I want to create this. So this is the class name. You can try to put in your class. You have your class code, like I have this one, SA6083 case study. This section is for you to manage because sometimes you want to have a, a, a class under certain section. So this section is open. You can just put anything, right? I can either put as faculty, your faculty. You can either put it as a, a type of education, engineering, your field, uh, science, mathematics. It's up to you because it is more for organizing your Google Classroom. The subject also, because when you want to search, you can also search based on the subject. Let's say I put here my subject is on education. Okay. Room, you can, because sometimes uh, different lecturers may want to have a different room you are sharing. So you can either put room on one, it's up to you. There's no specific thing. The most important thing depends on how you want to organize your class. You can put class uh, room 001, okay? And the other person will have uh, room 002 to differentiate between the two. So I just leave this blank. I just put uh, Google Series 1 and education. So I give you some time to create this. For those of you who just uh, maybe uh, came in, in order to create a class, you click on the plus sign. There's a pop-up about join or create a class. Click create class and you will be you will see this pop-up uh, information. The most important thing is to fill up the name of your class. And then you click create. So it will take some time. All right. So I'm in my class right now. So what about you guys, uh, participants? Because this is a webinar, uh, it's a WebEx event, so I cannot interact with you. So uh, we'd appreciate if you can uh, put it inside your chat so that I can uh, see. Okay. Yes, you my comment already done for me. All right. So now when you go inside here, I, I explain to you what this thing is all about. Okay. This part here is, I think, the same as uh, uh, information or posting, where a lot of uh, things do, either you are sending assignment or you are making announcement will be available here in the list. Classwork is where you want to create your module. You want to create a topic. You want to create assignment. You can see here. So this is where you want to create assignment, quiz, question, 
you want to put your notes, materials, and even you can reuse your post. Reuse post means if you have an instruction for one class and you want to use the post for other class, then you can type reuse post. You don't need to retype or rebuild again. And this is where to create topic. Okay. Uh, people is for you to see your students as well as you can have collaborators. Let's say you are teaching with other two lecturers. Then this is where you are the admin for this class and you want to invite the other two of your colleague to join in and develop the module for your class. So just type the email of that particular person they will receive your email and if they accept your invitation, they will also become your collaborators to create the class. Okay. So this is uh, people and grade is where after you do some grades, you will see the grades of the students. All right. So in this main page, you can see here, this is the class code. Okay, like mine, GWYKTR6. If you want to make it bigger, in this uh, box, you just uh, click. And this is the link that you will be given to your student. Okay, so you can copy invite link. And this is where you paste your WhatsApp group uh, that has your student and they can use this code to join your class. So where do they join their, your class? Okay, when they open up Google Classroom, they click here, this is where join class. And they put in their class code over here. Oh, I didn't copy just now. All right. So this is the class code. And the student will put their class code inside here. Okay, and then they will press join. So once they press join, they already entered your class. So this is how you create a class and you get the class code and the class code is given to the student and this is how the student join your class. Okay. You can also create the meeting link through Google Meet. So you see when you have this integration using Google platform. So the good of having an integration under one platform is that it provides everything what Google has together with Classroom. So if you click here, generate meeting link, have a pop-up window and you can create generate meeting link. So this is the meeting link that you will give to your student if you want to do some uh, class online class through Google Meet, right? You can make it visible to student, and you can also make it uh, where the student cannot see. So you can copy them. Well, the question arises: Will this uh, meeting link? is fixed or you can change if you were to have another uh, session. Well, you can. You can maintain this. Okay, let's say I save this. So you can see here this meeting link. Okay, you can see this meeting link. So if the student opens up the classroom, 
and just click here or if you give this link inside the whatsapp group or announcement then they can just click and link if you want to change this link we have this uh, setting here so this is where you can still change any information okay under this general invite code you can have this invite link oh sorry this is invite link google meet okay so under the setting again i go here under this setting this is the first link that you obtain when you click create meeting link you can reset into a link so if let's say you want to have a different link for next week so you can reset it can will give you a different google meet link so this link can be given to the students okay you can make it visible to the student or the student cannot see this uh, meeting link right so these are the uh, key features that uh, you can uh, adjust okay when you open up create a class you will notice that google suggest to you a picture can you use your own picture of course you can go through your class inside this uh, main picture here on the right hand side down below there is a select team if you want to use the available team that is already available in google you can click here so this is where you can select which picture that you want let's say i want to use this so i click this one and i select the class team so it will change if you want to upload your own photos you can also upload some of you may want to upload for example unimas or pictures related to your then there's no problem you can select the photos and you can upload and make it as a background for your class okay all right uh, so far okay or is there any any uh, questions or anything before we go to the next part how to uh, create those assignment and a uh, module dr shah yes uh, there is a question from dr kwan okay uh if we use our private google account cannot see the google meet link in google classroom right yeah oh, this is a question hmm. okay uh let me check this my uh, webex bar is uh, blocking for me to go to it to wait until okay all right let's see i'm putting up this one Ah, yes, you cannot see them. This is my private account. Uh, if you are using private, you cannot use them. Uh, it's not connected. If you have Google Suite, like for example, in our case, the UMT, subscribe uh, G Suite for Google, then you have this embed. But if you don't have this embed, there's no problem because you can go here and use google meet that means uh, it's not automatically embed but you need to do it manually so you go to google meet create the link and uh, you can go and give the link to the student so that is what you can do okay i think i better use my uh, the private uh, my personal account so that you can see because since uh, i think you must don't have uh, google suite right? for but i can show you the two different things Having Google Suite, that means you can create a meeting link straight away. You see the difference? This is a UMT account, and this is a personal account. Okay. Wait. 
I need to wait for the bar to go up. Okay. okay, the next step now is uh, how to create your classwork. Okay, now uh, everybody try to go to classwork. Let We want to create a different topic. Uh, you have topic one, topic two, or topic three. This topic is similar the one that you have some some lecturers their topic is based on week they have week one week two week three some they make topic as uh, as their topic per se this is topic one on this uh, aspect topic two on this uh, aspect topic three and some lecturers they design the topic in such a way that topic one is for all the notes Topic two for assignment, topic three for lab report. So creating this topic depends on how you want to organize. So let us start first, how to create this topic. You can go to create. So you have assignment, quiz, question, material. Okay. Assume that you want to put in your notes. Okay or any other references okay let us start for oh, sorry sorry we start for recreating a topic sorry so click it and go to topic so assuming that you want to put topic one okay let's say in my case topic one is about google classroom Some of you might want to put it topic one as uh, teaching materials. It's okay. It's up to you because this is <clears throat> depends on uh, how you want to develop them. So you add, so you have here topic one. Okay. Let us create another topic because I want to show to you uh, after this what you can do if suddenly you have uh, many topics. Let's say you create another topic. So, like for me, let's say I create topic two. Okay. So, if you have already created two topics, you will notice that the latest topic is situated on top, right? In this case. So what to do? How do you arrange them? If you want topic one to be on top and topic two to be down below, what you can do is you just click, right click mouse and bring it down. See? So it's already arranged. So don't worry if suddenly when you create a lot of topics, then the topic jumble up. <clears throat> you can just arrange it back. Okay, have a try when you have this. When you have two topics, have a go. Uh, transferring topic one to topic two uh, on top and then uh, vice versa. <clears throat> you can also see here the topics next to your site okay so if you want to go to a specific topic it will open up topic two or you want to see all the topic so there you go so you can see all this so now you have created the topic <clears throat> okay the next step is how to create the things inside this topic 
where you want to create assignment, you want to add in your reading materials. Okay, let us go again here. So you can create, assuming that you want to put in all your notes. So go to your material, create, go to your material, give a name, let's say I put here materials for You can put in a description, it's optional. On the right, it will ask you where to put this material. Is it inside the topic? If you want to click this one, select topic one. So this reading material will be located under topic one. If you want to put it under topic two, you can just click here. So it will go into topic two. Now I want to put it inside topic one. Okay. The things when you have a, when you have a student, this can be assigned. Either you want to give to all students or you want to give to a selected group of students. Okay. You can do this and you can even select whether you want to give to this class that you have just created or you want to post it to also another class that you have also created. Okay, these are the things. Now, how to add your notes? Let's say you have a PowerPoint file. So you add. So they will ask you whether you want from your Google Drive, you want to provide a link. Because sometimes you have already prepared in a Google Drive a folder containing all your notes and you create a link, a sharing link for your folder. So you can also provide the link where the student click and they have access to your folder. You can add in the file. Okay, assuming that I want to add a file, so you can also post a YouTube video inside here. For the student to see so let's say you have a file you can select either from your google drive or from your uh, computer okay let's do it together you just select any files try to upload okay let's say i want to upload this so open So this file is already uh, uploaded, but it's not posted yet. Okay. You can also create something here from Google Docs, slide sheet drawing. This is where by having this classroom, since it integrates with other platform or other Google apps, so it's easier for you to uh, manage things. Okay. I have put up this, then I can put post. So now you can see here, in like my case, topic one, I have a reading material. When the student click, they can get this material. Okay. So how is everybody doing? Have you tried this uh, right now? And again, what happened? You accidentally posted in a different topic. There's no problem. Just right click and transfer them. So now you see my reading material is located at topic two. Okay. Now I change it back into topic one. So we have gone through today, uh, in your classroom. Second, uh, 
adjusting the background, this, this uh, sorry, uh, information, right? Uh, you can add in your own pictures. You can also post this announcement, welcome. Okay. So that when the student join, the first thing they will see is uh, this one. So then, then the next step, we go to how to create a topic so that you now you want to manage your uh, learning module. We created topic one and topic two. And as I said, depends on how you want to manage it. Some people topic one as a notes, topic two assignment, topic three lab report, uh, just like uh, the normal things that each one of us do in the, our own LMS. Some go according to week, some go according to the topic of the chapters. And uh, we have seen how to create a site where you can post your reading material to the student. Okay. Now the next step is how to create assignment. Okay. Again, you can go to create. If you want to put in assignment, you can just click here assignment. Again, you can answer here which topic that you want to put in. Let's say I want to put into topic one. Okay. Right? And instruction, this one is task one. Google Apps. I put a name here. I can add a file if I want to. Right? Let's say I add this file. Okay, everybody can try. Uh, click create, click on assignment, and you can select a file that you want. Okay. Here at the instruction, you can select whether student can view the file, student can edit the file, or student can make a copy for, uh, for each of the student. If you don't want them to work together, that means individual assignment. So you can set, make a copy for each student. So in this setting here. If let's say you just want to create something, you can press create. So it's the task based on document, slides or sheets or forms. Okay, and then you want to assign. If you want to assign, Okay, you can adjust the ones that you want, or you want it to be ungraded just for formative assessment. If you want to have a due date, you can set the date, when, and the time. So you can set when they need to submit. Let's say I put here 21st of February. The time is 11.59. Right? And they have this. If you want to add rubrics for you to grade, add in your rubric if you have. And you can save. And again, anything that you do, it will be put on the first list. If you want to change, you can just click and bring it down. <clears throat> okay. So, so far, how is it? Is it okay? Can you all follow me? Eh? Okay, Dr. Shah. All right. So, uh, these are these are the basic things about uh, Google Classroom. 
So having this, now you can start to play around uh, up to your creativity to generate this. Okay. Now uh, we are going to have a break before I'm going to another another tool. Maybe about five ten minutes. But for those of you who are still here, you can try this. Uh, let's see, is this one? So, uh, this session we just give you some brief introduction regarding Google a Classroom. Hopefully, you can have uh, some ideas. Um, the thing is, uh, Okay, before that, I give you this. We are going to do one activity because this thing also is related to YouTube because after this, we are going to YouTube. Okay, uh, can you see the? this is the code? I will copy this. Okay, now you try to join in as student. <clears throat> I put this inside the chat. Again, the code is uh, A7. Copy again. This is the class code. You go to your Google Classroom and click the sign button here. And once you enter Google, Google Classroom interface, now you click in as a student join class and you put in the class code inside over here okay what i want you to experience is related to youtube i've created one uh, interactive what we call that quiz using youtube as well as google slide or power slides like powerpoint can i access Okay, just put in the code. This is the class code. Tak dapat access tak, Tasha? Kalau kita copy link dia. Copy invite link. Okay. The copy invite link pun uh, tak boleh ke? Uh, saya, saya copy sekali lagi. Sebab nanti saya copy okay. tak dapat dah Tasha. Alright, no class with that class code mm. Wait. Okay, let me check again. account can access oh mentioned here your account can access the class error message okay let's see if i need to invite you over here see whether you can use the personal this one okay let me create this one one Access this class. Okay, try to use this. I put in task one. I will add in a file. Try to do this again. This one using my personal account. Okay, make a copy for each student. You copy this into task instruction. Let's 
sun. Okay, let us try this one. Try this one. I give you this link. <clears throat> and see whether you can come enter this uh, uh, UMT Remote Learning Google Doc. X64QEAR. Try and see whether you can uh, use this to enter this. Ah, all right. Okay. You can go to the, the task and try to uh, download the task and uh, answer the question because this one is related to YouTube, which we are going uh, after this. Okay, so now you can access. Can you access the file? The file that I've uh, given? Dr. Dayang, tak boleh access lagi. Access, okay, Sharifah. Dapat, dapat. Dapat, 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 Try to answer that because that is what I'm trying to show to you how YouTube can be used for creating assignment or task in which you want them to see only a certain portion of the video from the YouTube. Okay, you can see here. If uh, now I'm I'm opening up, I'm sharing this right. One has turned in. So if I were again, I go here, sorry. Okay, if I go to the classwork, how to look into the assignment that has been uh, turned in. You have this uh, turn in. If you hover mouse over here, you can click. So it will show to you who are the students that has already submitted. Okay. So you can grade them over here, give them marks. You can see their work. Oh, this is not me. Okay, okay, wait, wait. Okay. 
Oh, okay, okay. Ah, all right, all right. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. I need to edit. Actually, I've given you the slide. All right. Uh, let me edit back. I create another task. Okay. This one. Okay, sorry again. Let me create assignment. Okay, task two. Adding. Actually, that is not the file. Uh, this is the file. Sorry for my mistake. Uh, okay, this one, this one. You need must Google slide thing. Man. All right. Okay, this is the one. Student can make a copy. Okay, please try this. Uh, please try this one. Task number number two. Let me copy this again. Uh, this is the actual one. Okay. All right, assign. Okay, uh, do this, please. Uh, this is the actual one. Uh, task two. Please go to task two. I've already posted. Okay, try and uh, complete this activity. You will have a, a YouTube video as well as a box where you will need to answer the question. Okay, you will receive this if you can. I'm sharing it. Right? Where to find task? Only task what? Oh, okay. Yes. Do we need to download the task too? Ah, uh, yes. Download we can download and rename. Download and rename. Tak dapat lah, Dr. Shah. Tak dapat lah. Good. Dan tak dapat nak buka. Dia dia boleh buka ke? Supposedly. Dia, boleh, dia, dia akan buka di dalam Google. Dalam okay. uh, Chrome. Okay. Ah, tak dapat buka. Tak dapat buka. Eh? Okay. Ya. Binary file, okay, it's okay. Uh, there's some technical error. I give you this this uh, file. Wait, let me create a copy because let me create a copy and I give this link. <clears throat> share. Link. Okay, I give this in the chat. Okay. Maybe there's a problem with the file. Okay, I put in this chat section.
Okay. When you click at the link, it, the, it will go, it will prompt you and ask you to make a copy. So you make a copy. Uh, dear format format Google Slide. <clears throat> it should be it should open uh, Dr. Shazrina, it should open inside Google Chrome or your browser and go inside your uh, inside the website then you inside the google apps and you can uh, do the activity over there you will did you did you see this prompt that comes out Copy document. We like to make a copy. If you uh, see this, then you click make a copy. Okay. Uh, since we are running out of time, you don't need to submit. But uh, what you will see is you click a video. That video will play about, I think, one minute or 45 seconds. Then you answer inside that sheet inside the, the document. Okay. Were you able to access the file now? Yes, it's a All right. It's that file. Uh -huh. Okay. Maybe there's some technical things when I upload it inside the task two. But at least, uh, Alhamdulillah, for task one, you have the experience to get the task, uh, rename and submit again.
Okay, so do most of you finish that thing? I can see here, Dr. Isabel. Okay, let me see. The auto auto sending or we need to click. No, no need. No need to send. No need because ah. oh, okay. <laughs> at least at least Dr. Madina dapat dapat isi dapat, dalam tu kan jawapan. Dapat dapat ah, dapat, dapat, dapat isi and dapat answer okay. the question. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we go here. What I'm trying to show to you is. Uh, this is one example how you can use YouTube before I give some introduction about YouTube where uh, if you see now I'm sharing this make it this bigger okay the good thing about having this uh, you create an interactive uh, quiz using Google slide is when you embed uh, a YouTube When you go to format option and video playback, this is where you can adjust where to start and where to end. Okay, so this is how YouTube can be used. If you were to assign, let's say, a task where the student needs to answer, for those of you who have experience using quizzes. Quizzes where you put a video, then you can put in a section of a question, a question after a certain minute. But uh, in this in this uh, form, you can insert a video. If the video is too long, you can restrict the timing of which the student need to watch, and then you can create this. They can answer. But today, I'm not highlighting how to create this, but I will give Dr. Mazina a video that I make on how to make this uh, interactive Google Slide uh, quiz for students to fill up uh, later on. So this is part of uh, YouTube. Okay, we are going to YouTube. Okay. Now, YouTube, as you all know, is a channel. Everybody has it. But I'm not uh, here to explain how to become a YouTuber. I know... Uh, some of your colleagues are better in uh, uh, in sharing on how to become a YouTuber. But what I'm trying to share to you is two things where you can use YouTube as part of your teaching and learning. How is it? It's just a video, right? It has a video and then you share to them. So what's the, what's the, the, the interesting thing about having... For those of you who hasn't dwelled detail into YouTube, now I would like to share to you these two things. Uh, what I mean is that those of you who didn't dwell detail means that you are just finding a video, uh, putting in your assignment or finding a video gift to the student. Okay, we are going to do this. I'm using YouTube, uh, not as a YouTuber yet, because my, my key strength is, is on face-to-face uh, -face interaction. That is why I developed kids. Only uh, I started to use Google four years ago. Okay, and when the pandemic comes, this is where I focus more on this. But this time, I'm using a 360 degree camera, and started to uh, allow students to use their virtual reality goggle. Okay, see, this is a 360 degree video. This is, I made, uh, last time I made it for a promotion for the school. Or maybe I stopped here. Okay. If you are using a handphone, I'll give to you this video. If you are using a handphone, those of you who has a handphone where you can uh, see in terms of uh, virtual reality, you can use a goggle and you can turn around your head and you can feel as though that you are inside the lab. Okay. There is a way on how to upload a 360-degree video. So these are among the videos that I make by myself because we are trying to promote to the uh, school children 
uh, regarding uh, our facilities. So again, they can just uh, click. It becomes a virtual reality put up in the VR go and as though they are there. When we do this to the students, to school children, uh, we need to take care because some of them, they accidentally walk because they think that they were inside the hatchery. So in a hall, sometimes we need to remind them. For some, they when they stand up properly, then they don't move, it's okay. Right. So you can upload a virtual reality video using a 360 degree camera, not just a normal video that you take. So even though they are in remote learning, when you have this ability, so students can feel the experience as, as though that they are inside the lab, watching you doing the experiment or visiting a place. I've uh, taken some uh, 360 degree video about, since I'm a fisheries uh, person, about uh, Bakau, Kutan Bakau, and then uh, in the field uh, or in the pond. But I didn't upload yet because some of them I use a different app to put the video so that the student can see. So this is one thing. But another thing that you should take up the advantage of having a YouTube is that the ability to create a playlist. Those of you who don't have a playlist yet or don't even know about playlists, this is where you should take the opportunity to create a playlist. You know, in the 21st century, we talk about two things, content creation. Another one is content curation. So content creation is where you make a video or you create content in a Google Classroom uh, module like that, and the student can learn from it. Content curation is where you use an existing things, but you arrange them and it has become a module for teaching and learning. So for example, let me share to you some of the playlists that I created and share with the student. Since I'm teaching one of the subjects, Science Perikanan, so we get a video about Pukat Jerut, for example, Chandak Sotong, Traps, Long Line. With this playlist, you can share with the student. Okay. Take, for example, this one that I have this. If you click on the blue, uh, on the view playlist, this is the video that you have collected from the YouTube. You compile them in a playlist. I make this name, Pukat Jerut. If you want to share to the student, this playlist, you don't want to make it public, but those who has the link can, can assess, click unlisted. Then, it will provide you with a, with a link. Okay. Okay. And you can share this by clicking on the link. You see this link? So this is the link where you give to the student for the student to assess, access the list of the videos that you have created for them to learn. So does anybody ever tried this before? Uh, curating content 
video content students to watch and you share them so if you have this link you can just copy the link maybe in your lms or even in your classwork as a reading material so you can add in the link so when the student link they have access to the videos right so this is one thing that you can do with youtube apart from becoming a youtuber uh, where you upload videos that is a normal thing everybody now is being doing and some of them are making money <clears throat> but again in another perspective you can curate a content based on the existing videos that is available in youtube compile them in a playlist okay and create a link now that is one thing the other thing what uh, youtube can do is that okay uh, let us uh, try uh, you try and how to create a playlist but before that you need to create your own channel okay let me show you you go to youtube Okay, but make sure you log in with your Google account. Okay, you go to YouTube, log in into your Google account. For those who have not yet created a channel, when you click your logo, the top one, you can click here it will ask you prompt you to create a channel so you just create a channel because in order to create a playlist you must have a channel so like uh, me i've already created a channel so when you have a channel you can view your playlist and even your videos that you uploaded Okay, so for those of you who have uh, created or has their own channel, then we can go to the next task. For those of you who have not yet have a channel, make sure you press here. And the top one, you, you click, it will ask you to create a channel. Okay, well, so far, okay, huh? We're going to try to create one playlist. All right. Now, let us go on to create a playlist. Try and see. Find a video regarding your field, for example. Let's say now, or we can do we can do this. We go to the same thing. Assuming that I want to do Google Classroom. Okay, let us try to find videos for Google Classroom. Okay. So you search here, Google Classroom, find some videos that you want. Let's say you want this video. So what you can do is the next step. Okay, everybody try to go, we, we try to centralize, search for Google Classroom. Then you will get a list. Assuming that this is the video that you want to put inside your playlist, you can press here to play, or you can press here, save to playlist. Some of you might want to watch first, so you can click here. If you don't want and you want this video to be in your playlist, just click the three dot button and save to playlist. Okay, for those of you who open this, you can click here at the bottom, save. Okay, now let's create a playlist. You will be prompt here. For those of you who did not have any playlist before, you click 
create playlist. Okay, now say I'm putting here Google Classroom form, so you can create. So this video will be compiled in your Google Classroom form. Now let us you add another video. Let's say I want to add this video. So save to playlist. Okay. I want to save it inside Google Classroom 4. So I click here. It is already safe enough. You don't need to press anything. Okay. Now we have added two videos. How to watch the playlist. You have two methods. You can go to the library or you can see here. Scroll down to the playlist. And you can see this one. Just now I created Google Classroom 4. So this is the playlist. Another way is you click on your logo. You can go to your channel. There is a list of uh, things. And you click at playlist. Then you have it. Google Classroom 4. Okay, so far, is it okay? Still can uh, follow the, the thing? All right. Now, what can we do with this thing? And how can we... Uh, create activity for the student. I give you some ideas uh, which I plan to do for the next coming semester. Now, maybe you can see, oh, okay, the first step, I can create a playlist combining all the, the videos. So what I can, I can do with the playlist? Okay, just now you saw, you can set for you to set the setting, you can click on the view playlist. If you want to share this playlist to the students or anybody, you can set it as unlisted. Public means that anybody search Google Classroom 4, they can have access to your playlist. But if you want only for the student, you can put in unlisted. Okay it will create, it will take some time here to create a sharing button to refresh. Ah, okay. You will have this arrow icon to share. So, you will be given a link and you can share this. Okay, that is one. Now, nowadays, students prepare their final year presentation and they upload their presentation to YouTube. Then you need to search one by one. How are you going to get all the students to put inside one playlist? Whereas they upload a video on their channel, but they are able to put up the video into one, some sort of like a folder, or you call it a playlist. This is how to do it. Here, this three dot button below, when you click, you can see collaborate. So if I click collaborate here, collaborators can videos to the playlist. Not only the student, if you were working together with your colleague and trying to find videos to add in for your teaching and learn, you can copy this. Now, now I'm trying to copy this try to add in the videos inside my playlist. So collaborator can add videos and allow new collaborator. Okay, I will put inside the chat. Okay, so you can try and add in videos related to Google Classroom inside the playlist that I have created. We'll see, anybody? Uh, can uh, try and we'll see 
how this thing can be added up. Okay, while you are searching, let me explain to you. So what does this relate to your teaching and learning? You can gamify your teaching and learning with students by playing with having a game instead of they, they are trying to learn to see, uh, to find knowledge, they are trying to capture relevant videos and create a content. Okay? They collaborate together, finding videos. You can create different playlists for different groups where you can also be the collaborator and you can monitor what they are doing. So that is one thing that you can do. Okay. Second is you can give the task to see how much they learn by applying hutagogy where after uh, maybe listen to your talk, to your lectures, now they need to find four videos they need to watch. So they can create playlists and you can see and you ask them to learn and you can create activities from there. So there are many ways where you can interact and you can let them interact with each other. So these are among the things that you can do with uh, YouTube, right? So apart from becoming a YouTuber, you can use YouTube as part of your teaching and learning activity. Uh, see, now when I uh, refresh, uh, Dr. Shazrina, Dr. Zukanain possibly uploaded. So now we have a content created by colleagues. So this is part of the way where you do content curation as well as you can use this for students teaching and learning activities. So imagine if these are the videos presented by the student, they need to make videos upload into YouTube. You need to go one by one. If you provide a playlist, collaborate with them, then their tasks that they uploaded in the YouTube can be compiled into one playlist. Okay? So, see, now Dr. Siti Ahia, Dr. Salyani, so the content is now increasing. So, try this with your student and see how is the outcome will be. Okay? This is how you manage their presentation or, or things that you want to track their learning apart from, as I said, becoming a YouTuber, uploading videos, but you should leverage on what is available in the YouTube to create and design your teaching and learning for the student to learn, right? Okay, any question regarding to uh, YouTube? So we have gone through uh, how to, uh, to create a channel, how to create a playlist, and how to share your playlist to the student and how to collaborate to create, to curate content, right? Okay. All right. Okay, Prof. Playlist for our class seminar slide. Ah, private setting. Ah, no. If you, yes, playlist for our class seminar or slide, if you are not, uh, if you don't want to share with others, you want to create by yourself, only for yourself, then you can create as private. Like for me, for example, uh, because this is my personal, uh, I've created this a long time ago because there are a lot of things because I'm also interested in running and all that. So you can see me running and, and also some other things. But what I want to show to you is, you see, some of them are unlisted. Some of them are private. Okay. So if you want to create uh, where you don't want to share, you can set it as private. So I use this a lot for me to 
learn things. So when you want to learn things, take for example, currently now I'm in uh, Bakat, Pusat Pembangunan Bakat. So I want to learn more about talent management. So I create a list, all the videos related to talent management, uh, so on and so forth, compile it to this playlist and I make it a private. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If let's say, um, let me, I already have uh, the series of uh, apa, uh, video, ada some of the video that saya yang created, macam macam okay. saya buat whole play on uh, certain counselling session using certain theories lah kan. Alright. So kalau macam kita already have that, already have that kind of video yang dalam channel kita, tapi how can, uh, boleh tak kita nak uh, rearrange? dia punya content tu lah sebab all, uh, oh. all this was saya structure kan benda tu. So kalau kita nak rearrange dia dalam satu playlist macam Dr. Shah buat kan cantik yes. je kan nampak uh -huh. proper je. So so boleh ke kalau kita nak move dia masuk dalam playlist? Uh, how how can we do that? <laughs> boleh. Ah uh, like this uh, uh, Dr. Mazina. If let's say you have assuming eh, assuming that okay before that I go here first because since I'm here. Let's say you have added Sometimes you want to arrange. You can just click and bring up. Okay. Change this. Ah, uh, you can do the sorting. But uh, oh, here. Sorry, sorry. Don't mind that. See. There's a hand on the left, left, click and you can move this one to be the first, this one to be the third one. Okay, this one maybe you want to be the first, so you can arrange this. Uh, this is how you can do to arrange, so that when the students see the, the list of the videos, can follow. Let's say you have module one, module two, module three. Okay, if you want to add your videos inside your playlist, just search your video norm as as what you search from other people and add that to the playlist. That's all. Let's say all just right. now I search Makmal PPSPA. SPA. So this is the video that I created. So now I want to add this to a new playlist. So I can create a new playlist. Then Type in your playlist. Let's say module satu. Yeah, for example, this one to SPA. So, this is how you add in your videos inside the playlist. All right. So, yes, thank for, you, Dr. Shah. <laughs> uh, for those of you who just knew that you can create this, use this and uh, try to create activity with your student. All right. Uh, sorry today, uh, uh, too engrossed with this until only cover two okay the last part i'm going for google google site okay maybe we we couldn't have time to do the activity but just want to show you google site is a, a website platform that you can create share you this one first ada soalan uh, dr shah okay. from dr salian uh, can we limit the period of viewing for the collaborate added playlist? Oh, you cannot limit, uh, but you need to do it manually. I show you afterward. Okay, now I have this. Share again. Okay, I show to you how you want to to limit. Okay, let's say just now we have. Uh, I go to the playlist. Sorry for the cartoon because sometimes my children also they like they just click using my <laughs> my phone so you can see cartoon here and there also. Uh, okay, just now Google uh, Google Classroom four. Okay, I share this with everybody. Now I want to stop sharing. So how do I go about? You go to this one, the three dot. Go to collaborate. Okay, now five is collaborating with me. Just cancel. Finish. 
So invitation link is deactivated. No more sharing. Uh, that is how you do. So again, if you want to collaborate, these are the collaborators. If you don't want anymore, that's all. Then, yeah, you are in control under uh, for this one. Okay. All right. Just want to show you to you. This is uh, some of the things. Google site is. A website where you can also create content okay based on the website it's a very straightforward uh, approach if i can uh, now it's only 11 50 or 58 uh, just maybe five minutes to show to you okay. this is example of uh, i created a teaching portfolio uh, to teach the UMT staff by just using Google site to create content. So when you go through, you can add in uh, your slide, which you save as a picture. So you can add in from here, you can arrange the, uh, the, the layout as what you want. You want, you can add in some uh, short survey together inside so while you are interacting with uh, students sometimes you don't want to you don't have a powerpoint but you have a more so you can create the module using google site prof karim is uh, is the the one who always create module using google site actually i learned from him uh, three years ago 2018 before i started to develop this we uh, invited him to give a talk uh, about uh, developing the uh, it's not about google site but it's a develop uh, storifying your journey as academician so he showed how to develop a portfolio using google site so like me i'm developing this uh, this is the one that i used to teach the staff here in UMT and you can add in resources okay for example so you can add in resources and also some files okay for the student to download uh, I may not have the time to show but uh, at least you can see and you can get some ideas on how you can use Google site, a very simple tool under Google to create a website for you to teach, to create a module. It's very easy. You just uh, follow. How to do it? To insert all this uh, link. This is how you do. If you want to create a new page, a new link, the one that you see here, home, overview and you can create also a sub under here like for example like this is it this one uh, <clears throat> under teaching philosophy if i were to see okay so i can create a sub page under here and that is how this thing is created uh, underneath here right so this is the the edited view if you want to see the view the version you can click preview okay and you can select the type of preview this is the preview that you will see when you use a desktop this is using a tablet and this is using your smartphone so at least you can know how your website will look like in three different platforms. Okay, last thing that I want to show, you can also use this. I'm building up slowly. Uh, 
this is my uh, e-portfolio converting my teaching portfolio last time for AAM. So transferring them as an e-portfolio. So apart from you creating content, you can also ask the student to create an assignment yeah, their e-portfolio using Google site. So that's why I said, not just we creating content, but after they have uh, gone through our session, they can also create content, their report using Google site. So you see, student can, can do the task assignment based on, based on uh, Google sites. And this is how you increase the student's skill uh, for the 21st century. Uh, digital literacy, for example. So, you can uh, create your own. I'm starting to transfer all my stuff here. It's not uh, fully completed yet. So, these are among the things that you can do. But sorry because I'm taking too much time for that too. So, couldn't have the practical session for this one. But at least uh, you know that this is a very straightforward uh, things and you can also learn this from uh, YouTube on how to create this. So that's all for me. Uh, the notes I will give to you later, Dr. Mazina, once I've uh, completed. So thank you very much for attending for, uh, together with me today eh, to all participants. Uh, yes, Dr. Shatina, we can off the collaborator for the student for a certain deadline. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for insightful and informative uh, sharing from Dr. Shah. Uh, so I think uh, we don't have the question because they already asked you the question. Okay. And um, I think that's all for today's workshop. I really hope that all the participants are able to apply uh the knowledge the information that shared by dr shah for the next uh semester teaching and learning okay uh thank you uh, thank you to all participants for joining our workshop so thank you very much dr shah for okay. your um insightful and informative information right thank you okay assalamualaikum, Wa -alaikum salam.